Despite all the techniques, tactics, and strategies, there is something deeply primal about MMA, like the inherent destructive power manifested in the one-punch knockout ability. The fighters blessed with it always have the great equalizer on their side that can overcome any technical and tactical deficiency. Very few have had this gift to the level of Anthony Rumble Johnson. A terror in the cage across four weight divisions, and a humble gentleman outside of it. Johnson was taken away from us way too soon by illness. What we have is a remarkable career to remember and be grateful for, having seen one of the most terrifying KO artists the UFC has ever seen in action. Anthony's origin story mirrors that of many other great fighters who were born with no prospects, only to be elevated by a positive role model in their lives. For Rumble, this role model was his grandfather, who adopted Anthony when he was only two years old, saving him from an alcoholic father and a drug addict mother. Aside from setting a tough but fair example for Anthony, his grandfather opened the wrestling gym door for him when he was eight years old. He loved it from the first day on the mats and went on to become a national and junior college champion before venturing into MMA at the age of 20. Rumble managed to somehow squeeze his light heavyweight frame into the welterweight weight limit and debuted with a first round TKO in 2006 before winning a welterweight tournament a month later. The UFC saw potential in him despite his modest pro experience and picked up Rumble to face Chad Reiner on just two weeks notice. What was even shorter than the notice was the time Johnson needed to mercilessly smash Reiner and announce himself in the big league. Anthony Johnson has got some power. It was obviously wobbly and then got hit with a big one that just put him away. Rumble continued his 7-2 welterweight run in the UFC, stacking up highlight reel knockout wins. He showed that aside from having dynamite in his hands, he also had the ability to destroy people with head kicks. Well, you know, he's been training with Kung Lee, and you saw in his corner. Oh! It is all over! But his toughest adversary was always the scale. Rumble struggled heavily and missed weight twice before he finally decided to move up a division to face a dangerous Vitor Belfort. The problem was that even the 185-pound limit proved to be too steep for Johnson, and he missed weight yet again. 197! this time by a whopping 12 pounds. That night, Rumble not only lost the fight to Vitor, but also his job at the UFC, which refused to tolerate his weight problems. Despite that, Johnson was far from finished, and just one fight later, he moved up to the division where he would really shine. In the next two years, Rumble trampled six opponents in smaller promotions, and even defeated Andre Arlovsky at heavyweight which seems insane considering that just a couple of years prior, he was fighting at welterweight. With his weight under control and on a six-fight winning streak, the UFC welcomed back Rumble for what was to become his career-defining light heavyweight run. On the path of his triumphant return was Phil Davis, who had a lot of hype behind him and was trying to prove he deserved a shot at the champion John Jones. Davis probably looked past Johnson, whose power and takedown defense proved to be too much for Davis. Up next for the rejuvenated Rumble, who was looking to break into the top of the division, was Brazilian legend Antonio Nogueira. If some fans had slept on Johnson until that point, this event would finally showcase his terrifying power to the whole world. Johnson had a flawless performance and didn't receive a single significant strike before violently separating the little Nog from his consciousness with some brutal uppercuts. It's all those years making 170, and he's making up for lost time at a very fast pace. Johnson's next opponent was Alexander Gustafsson, who at the time was seen as the top dog behind John Jones. The Swede had the home crowd on his side, as well as all the odds, but Rumble was having none of that. Just a couple of minutes into the fight, Rumble had Gustafsson hurt and immediately turned into a lion hunting down a wounded gazelle, not letting go of his prey until it was finished, completely silencing the Swedish crowd. Oh, that was a big It is all it. over! It. Wow. Anthony Rumble Johnson wow. finishes Alexander Gustafsson! Wow. With such convincing wins, the UFC gave Rumble the chance to fight for the title against John Jones. 
But because of Jones' problems outside the cage, he was stripped of the belt, and Johnson faced Daniel Cormier instead. This time, Johnson's raw power was not enough. Though he landed when Cormier gave him the distance, and even momentarily sent the Olympian flying across the octagon, courtesy of a big overhand right, but Cormier's relentless wrestling was slowly and surely sapping Rumble's energy. By the third, he was a wounded beast with nothing left to oppose Cormier, who submitted him and claimed the title. Rumble was quick to get back on the championship path at UFC 192, and to remind everyone why he belongs at the top. One of the few men who could match him in power and viciousness was Jimmy Manua. After Rumble reminded Manua in the first round that he was a wrestling champion before he started knocking people out, the second stanza offered what everyone was hoping to see, an overhand on the chin, two follow-up shots, and Rumble was celebrating his win in a performance bonus. At the day, Rumble Johnson! Ryan Bader was the next in line. He was determined not to experience the brutish power of Johnson and went for a takedown almost immediately. However, this approach did not save him from getting brutally knocked out. The only difference was that this time the knockout came via ground and pound rather than on the feet. Glover Teixeira, a Brazilian veteran, was up next in front of Rumble's championship ambitions. The two squared off in a co-main event of UFC 202. Glover attempted to apply pressure, but was never given the opportunity. Thirteen seconds into the fight, he succumbed to the touch of death encased in Rumble's uppercut. Hey. Interesting. Oh! Good lord. Wow! Good lord, that is a terrifying man. And Daniel, you the man, baby, but I'm coming for you. We're going to get it on, baby. We're going to get it on. Rumble's three consecutive knockouts inevitably led to another title shot against Daniel Cormier. This time around, Rumble decided to rely on his high school background and out wrestle Cormier, much to the frustration of his corner. And even though he was better on the feet, DC welcomed this decision and wore down Johnson enough to finish him with a rear naked choke a second time. In the post-fight interview, Johnson was his usual classy self, but surprised everyone with a very emotional announcement that he was retiring from the sport in the prime of his career. This was um, my last fight. It's just time for me to move on to something else. I would never, ever forget you. And uh, what better place than to end my career in Buffalo, New York? Fortunately, fans' hopes that this would not be Rumble's final appearance were realized when Rumble announced his return to the Octagon two years later. Little did we know that Bellator 258 was Rumble's swan song. He entered the Bellator light heavyweight tournament and returned to fighting with a bang. After being dropped in the first, Johnson gifted us with one last knockout over Jose Augusto Azevedo. Rumble qualified to advance further in the tournament, but had to pull out due to an undisclosed illness, which eventually claimed his life on November 13, 2022. The humble power hitter left a bright mark in the octagon as one of the most dangerous knockout artists in the sport. In all of his big moments and disappointments, Rumble always remained classy and treated everyone with respect. He turned every fight into a spectacle, and the excitement he brought each time will never be forgotten.